All right, it's day 10 of my 100 days of silver stacking. And today I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of basic short-term and long-term food storage and kind of household prep. Things you can do to make sure that you're prepared for if it's an SHTF situation or you just need to stay in for a while because of some bad weather and the power's gone out. And at the end, I'm going to showcase the new uh, Pegasus and Athena coin from the British Virgin Islands. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you thumbs up the video, guys. You like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out. And check out CanadianSilverSaver.com. Lots of great information there for me and the community. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome back. Canadian Silver Saver here again today. And I will show you guys a little bit of silver at the end of this video. No silly songs today, I promise. But uh, just to go on the theme of protecting your, your home, um, we want to kind of follow up on the looking after yourselves and making sure that you're looking after your family and your future. And what you're seeing here is just a small uh, selection of what I decided to grab to kind of show you um, what I believe are things you can add or should have in your um, short-term and long-term prepping. So this is if you have to bug in because let's say for those people who think that you know the SHTF situations will happen, uh, but also for the people that just what if the power goes out? What if you can't go to the store? Uh, in Canada here, we do have a, a real um, snowed-in problem. It can happen. It does happen. And if you don't have ways to feed yourself to uh, hydrate yourself, medicate yourself, and keep yourself warm, uh, you can really, um, you know, put yourself in a bad spot in just a couple of days. So what you're seeing here is is nowhere near uh, what is around what I have, but I also don't want to show uh, everybody everything because, you know, I think the, talked about this briefly before, smoke and mirrors is good, and people knowing that you're prepping and, and or at least are, you know, looking after your family let's take the prepping out of this because sometimes that gets a stigma and i don't think it should i just think that uh, as soon as you say that some people oh yeah, there we go some crazy guy thinking the world's gonna end that's not what this is about it can be but this is about making sure that if a short-term situation happens i'm ready for it and i had somebody make a comment a couple videos back and they deleted it quickly uh, but they did make a comment and say well you know you're just making yourself a target by having this stuff and i'm not denying that if people know what you've got that they're maybe likely to come see you and we talked about home security and that before but i would rather be prepared and have food shelter protection uh, water and um, medicine for my family for those situations and then have to worry about the people coming after me than sitting at home and, and deciding, oh no, we've got to leave our, our house and go find this stuff because we didn't prepare and now we are those other people that are desperate. I'd rather be defending myself against the desperate than being desperate myself. Um, you know, double-edged sword in some ways, but yeah. So let's talk about what's here just briefly and why I made this selection of stuff that you see here. And I think the first thing we're going to focus in on is, is water. Make sure you have water, guys. Now in Canada, um, we have uh, lots of fresh water because of, uh, you know, snow and uh, fresh lakes and stuff like that. But uh, it's still important to have water available. And guys, uh, snow, one thing to remember, if you're, uh, you're going to have snow, uh, to hydrate yourself and you have cold snow, you can actually increase hyperthermia tremendously. So be very careful with that and remember that. So, um, and you'll see here that right beside it is also the first aid stuff. So you, you can you can live a little longer without food than you can uh, without water. So water first, and then ways to keep yourself, um, you know, as, as well, take care of yourself as best you can. And I recommend a basic first aid course, learn how to do splints, tourniquets, uh, things like that. And then if you want to get into it, learn about proper CPR and whatnot. And if you don't know CPR, guys, uh, you, you know, I think it's something you need to go take for sure. Um, have a good first aid kit. Keep it stocked. Make sure the medicine's up to date. Medicine is something that is a bit of concern in a long-term kind of, uh, you know, bug-in situation or even bug-out situation because it does expire. But you want to have your painkillers. You want to have your, uh, your aspirin as well and uh, your Tylenol and that for blood thinning and that too. Very important. Um... You want to have stuff for uh, infections. You also want to have stuff against uh, allergies too, because that can really, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, hydrocortisone there it can really 
do wonders to making you more comfortable. I have dental floss there because dental floss is actually is really good to have. Uh, you want to have dental hygiene, of course, um, that, that because you can create some real problems there. Infection can come from poor dental hygiene and that can get you. Uh, but there are lots of other great applications for dental floss. And uh, we'll get into that more as this is going to be a multi-part series where we kind of dig a little deeper into what, you know, what's a good thing to have. And now we move into the food side of things. And uh, I have some here, a couple of long-term storage packs. Uh, they are a certain brand, Mountain House, and a couple of uh, the breakfast skillet and the vegetable stew are actually ones that are good. Um, some of them are pretty bland. I wouldn't say any of them are bad. Uh, honestly, people, I don't think any of these are bad. Um, they're just kind of bland. And they're a little pricey. Uh, but the idea is, is that these are extremely long-term storage, and that's why I'm kind of starting here. There's long-term storage for when, oh, hand in the camera, I'm a hand talker, long-term storage for when you're, uh, for just that very reason. Um, but you also want to have the, sh you know, you need the short-term storage because some food won't last as long, and you want to make sure you're going to want to eat it. Uh, that's a big key, guys. If you're having sh uh, short-term food storage, you know, for a few months in that, um, or even a couple of years, make sure it's something you're going to want to eat. If if you know, you get something you don't want to eat. It's going to come time. Hopefully, we don't need to get into these situations where you do need to eat your stored food. So make sure it's something you want to have. Um, now, this isn't something I need to really worry about because, guys, this stuff expires in 2046. Or, sorry, Best Buy 2046. You could probably eat this 30 years after that. I, I don't know. It's freeze-dried. It's pretty amazing. Um, remember, Best Before is not an expiry date. That's just uh, lots of other reasons why that has to be Best Before. So... A um, couple of great little things, and we, when I have a buddy come over soon, we're actually going to open up these, and we're going to eat them and show you what we've got here, so, uh, and why they're, they're tasty. Um, another thing we're moving into here is uh, have some honey. Honey doesn't really go bad. Lots of uh, reasons why to have honey uh, with the sugars and that in there, natural sugars. Uh, this is quinoa, and quinoa was a choice that I went with over something for some kind of grain storage that lasts a long time. This has a uh, much longer shelf life than rice, um, and... Uh, the idea is here with a few years of storage on quinoa, you're, you're, you should be good to go for a while So and have some good nutrients there. So some dried food storage there, some uh, some nourishment and way to keep the belly full. Uh, go you know, with your water there, boil that up. Uh, tea and coffee, I think tea and coffee is good. And there's a couple reasons for this guy. Our society is addicted to caffeine. Um, we don't talk about this a lot. Caffeine's a drug. And everybody's addicted to it, from kids to adults to whoever, pretty much. I mean, there's some people that don't drink it uh, for personal or religious reasons, but the idea is, is that uh, tea and coffee, if you get into a bug in or bug out situation, you don't have your caffeine, you're going to have you're going to need these painkillers. Caffeine headaches and caffeine withdrawals are brutal, um, but it's also a great way to uh, get some nutrients in that from your tea uh, and also get your, your up from your coffee and that. There's a reason why tea and coffee are in military rations, people. Keep that in mind. It lasts a long time. Uh, I have maple syrup in here because I'm Canadian. You can see this bottle is kind of empty. This was actually my cupboard bottle, uh, apart from grabbing from the food stash or some of the other stuff. But, um, the, you know, I just like having some maple syrup in there. It's kind of like honey. It doesn't last forever and I'm Canadian so that's kind of a representation now my heritage is British and uh, that my background is anyways and the the reason why I have Marmite here is yeast extract and people if it's Vegemite for uh, Australians or other people I think that's a little bit more worldwide popular but Marmite here the yeast extract is full of nutrients it is just jam-packed with vitamins um, I love it uh, it's gonna be weird because people do the marmite challenge and by the way when you spread it on your toast or bread like they do they're ridiculous you gotta do this nice thin coat but anyways um, full of nutrients and vitamins so just a great way whether you like it or not to really make sure you're getting uh, it's like a vitamin pill basically right there uh, marmite veggie mite so vitamins right um, coconut milk same kind of idea Coconut milk is kind of a coconut oil has kind of taken off in the recent years, so the price has gone up. But this is always on hand. We learned this a long time ago. Um, hydration, uh, all sorts of things. Coconut water too. This is the milk uh, specifically, guys. So I should have grabbed the coconut water can. So there's that as well. This is more flavorful. Coconut water can actually be used in medical situations, and I'll talk about that briefly, um, even with IVs and stuff. So there's kind of an interesting interesting reason why having coconut uh, is around is really, really important for you. Not only because it'll flavor your food and keep you interested in what you're eating, um, it'll last a long time, but it's really beneficial for lots of other reasons. Get some salt, guys. Uh, we'll talk about that why. Salt is good for so many things. Um, you know, health, uh, when it comes to... Um, 
uh, you know, med medical things, all, all little things you can do with salt, just hap handy to have around and last forever, right? So uh, not that you're going to use it a ton, but it's just one of those little things that when you need it, bam, you've got it. Fantastic. Even for cleaning and all sorts of things when, when you don't want to be using, uh, uh, you know, chemicals and that. Uh, vinegar, same type of idea. Vinegar does just wonders for, for health, for uh, first aid, for cleaning, for all sorts of things. So it's, and it lasts a very, very long time. Um you know, 2021, I think it's just the best before on that. So always great to have. Now moving into the short term food storage, and I just have a little bit here. This is actually right out of my kitchen. So there's white rice, there's protein bars, there's cereals and stuff like that. Um, that's maybe not the best cereal to choose. But the idea is, guys, is that if you have short term short term food storage, make sure it's going to be something you want to eat and, and nutritious. Um, I really like these, so I have these, but I eat these quickly anyways. But this is not what you want to have a lot of. You can have a little bit of this, but you're going to be wanting, you're going to need to eat it. Uh, you get a few months out of this, uh, rice, three to six months, maybe, um, you know, cereals, it, it really depends. But uh, this is your short term storage. This is my coffee, by the way, but <laughs> this is your short term food storage. And it's just one of those things where, um, you know, it's a little bit different scenario than, than what you're, we're doing here. All right, but it's not a bad idea to have this stuff, if, especially if it's time to bug out. If it's time to leave, uh, you can't stay at home anymore. You want to have some stuff you can hit on the road, um, and you will eat right away, and then you can tap into this later. So that way you've got a short-term food storage you can start with, and then hopefully things don't get there. But if we need to move into this stuff here, this stuff back here, we've got it. Another thing is, guys, as I want to do MREs, I want to show you some of the MREs that are out there, and uh, which is basically a larger version of this because they're fun. Um, they, they give you stoves, and it kind of opens up a whole nother topic. And that's really the reason why I want to show you some of those. Um, and if anybody has some MREs and they want to send them my way to do an unpacking because they uh, want to see that, I'd love to do that. I just uh, my access to MREs is quite limited, so uh, that's the reason. And this is what you should have to get started, in my opinion. And this, is, again, is just a, a small uh, sample of what uh, what's there. So uh, enjoy that, guys. A short little video is silver at the end because this video kind of dragged on a bit. But uh, lots of good information I hope you guys are taking in. And we'll see you soon. All right, everyone. So just the silver showcase at the end of the uh, serious video there, I guess. This is the Athena and Pegasus uh, $1. Very, very cool. British Virgin Islands. Uh, coin. The uh, queen's looking very aged in this one. <laughs> I like the big crown on them. The detail is pretty awesome. Let's see if I can get a nice focus there and see if I can tap to focus on your cell phones, everybody. That's what you're using. There you go. So, very, very cool. Just wanted to show this quickly. Uh, kind of a neat history. Um, the Pegasus here and, and Athena. Um, Pegasus was uh, uh, when when Perseus was f fighting, and there's a whole story behind that. Athena shows up and aids Perseus and actually gives him the shield that allows him to reflect Medusa's gaze and stuff like that. Um, but the reason for this is kind of after that, when Pegasus can't, a story where Pegasus has a, you can't tame him easily, and there's a bridle, a golden bridle, and she's holding the golden bridle on him there, which is, which tames Pegasus. And um, the other part of that story is not her, but the person's traveling to the heavens and Zeus knocks him off, and Pegasus enters um, oh, Olympus on his own, and uh, is then turned into the constellation Pegasus, so for all to see. So that's the story behind that anyways, in a brief little nutshell. So there you go, guys. Very, very beautiful. This thing's a reverse proof. Um, I, I don't want to open this one because it's in great, great shape, I, but I do want to open it to put it in the capsule, so I don't know what I'm going to do. There you go, guys. Just a little silver showcase at the end there, so that you know, uh, you know, so a little bit of something to make you drool a bit. But yeah, grab one of these. They're beautiful. Absolutely love. Them. Take care.